Philadelphia Phillies baseball on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. On a dreary, cool April Wednesday night in Philadelphia, the Phillies were looking for some offense in their first home win of the 2012 season. The Sixers were in Toronto looking for a way out of losing four in their last five and a way into the postseason. Across the state, the Flyers were working out of a three-goal deficit to pull off a series opening overtime stunner. The city was feeling much better after a trio of big victories. It was definitely what the doctor had ordered. Last night, the Phillies not only defeated the Marlins 7-1, but of course the Flyers came back from a three-goal deficit. Jacob Voracek's game-winning goal in overtime gives them the series lead. And the Sixers hanging on to the seventh seed right now for the postseason with a big win over the Toronto Raptors. Now tonight for the Phillies, they'll wrap up this three-game series in front of a sellout crowd at Citizens Bank Park against the Miami Marlins. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. And yes, the offense, at least for one night, woke up for the Phillies. And now they need to do it again against the Marlins. Well, that'd be nice, Tom. It made it a lot easier last night. They fell behind one to nothing in the game. You're thinking, oh, no, here we go again. It's going to be another one of those games. But no, in the third inning, they really started to do some things well. Juan Pierre had gotten a safe call at second, maybe out, but he scores on that ball off the leg of Johnson, hit by Polanco. Then Jimmy Rollins, a bullet in the left field. Morrison falls down. Jimmy moves into second base. Hunter Pence a base hit, so he was in scoring position because he had moved up, and he scores. Shane Victorino hits this ball, had a lot of trouble out there, did Stanton. And then the hit of the night with the crowd going, Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. Galvis hits the ball in the right field, knocks in two, and the Phillies had scored five runs at that point, and were starting to feel a little bit better about themselves. Of course, they would score seven overall in the first four games. They only scored eight. And you see the other numbers there, too, 26 to 14. And doubles, hey, they had two doubles last night, had three prior to that. So, yeah, last night they caught up in a lot of categories. Yeah, big category, too. Six for 14 last night with runners in scoring position. They only had the five hits in runners in scoring position in the first handful of games. Well, we talked about Freddie Galvis, what a big night he had. And Greg Murphy got a chance to catch up with the Phillies' second baseman earlier today. All right, thank you very much, Tom, here with uh, one of the men of the hour last night, a guy who's delivered two big hits in the last two games for the Philadelphia Phillies. Freddie Galvis is with us, and uh, Freddie, let's go back two games, the first game against the Miami Marlins, looking for that first major league hit, and you get it. You, you crush the double into the gap. How good did that feel to, uh, to get that uh, first hit behind you? Uh, I have to feel like really good, you know, you know, after get it, you know, I was like, I was like a little bit like more confident, you know, when, when I get it. So after that, I just go say like, you know, keep working and try to get more receipts. You know, you came off the spring where you hit the baseball really well, and then you come up here and it, it appeared like maybe you were pressing a little bit. Is that a fair thing as you were looking for that first hit? Yeah, yeah. I think like everybody when can hit for first time, it's like. A little bit of pressure, you know, to get that base. So the first game I was 0 for 4, and then 0 for 4 again. I was like, oh, wow, I went, I'm going to get that base, you know. So after that, I think, you know, I get it. I feel like much better right now. And then last night, you get up to the plate in another big situation. The crowd starts chanting your name, Freddie, Freddie. That had to feel great. I know Jimmy was in the dugout kind of warming you up ahead of time, uh, and then you deliver once again. Yeah, uh, I feel like really good, you know, after everybody was like sharing my name, you know, I was like, oh, wow. Like the first time, like that many people sharing my name, you know. So I was like a focus, you know, try to 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 hit the ball like hard, you know, somewhere. So you know, I think I got a double over there. All right, two doubles so far. Maybe tonight you get a single and a triple. We'll look for that. <laughs> Freddie Galvis, Tom McCarthy will send it back to you. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Jimmy Rollins said with this scene, he was just trying to make Freddie feel like he belonged. That was just prior to the base hit. The big hit that helped the Phils to the big inning. Tonight, it's Mark Burley on the mound for the Marlins. He'll be opposed by Joe Blanton. When we return to Citizens Bank Park, the lineups and first pitch.
The final game of this three game series between the Phillies and the Miami Marlins. Look at inside the Phillies dugout tonight. Some changes for Charlie Manuel, not so much for Joey Cora. Let's take a look at his starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, only from Comcast. Leading it off at shortstop, Jose Reyes. Then Emilio Bonifacio and Henley Ramirez. Giancarlo Stanton is followed by Logan Morris, the number five hitter. Gabby Sanchez hits sixth. In the bottom third of Infante Buck. And Mark Burley over from the Chicago White Sox will get a chance to hit tonight against right-hander Joe Blanton, who's making his first start of the year, his second appearance. And the first pitch of the night is in there for a strike, so we're underway. Yeah, he didn't pitch a whole lot last year, as everybody knows. He had all that arm trouble. Basically, his season was over after the month of May, although he was back at the end of the year. Made the postseason roster, and he gets Reyes to roll over on one to second, one away. Last night, Doc Halliday kept the top two hitters off base for the most part. That's what Blanton's going to try to do today. Yeah, there's our scouting report on Joe. You see his fastball, 87 to 90. There's Roy Halliday, who was so good here last night. They had a shot at him in the first inning, didn't get him, and that was it. Joe is one of those guys that spots his stuff. He needs good command of his fastball to use his changeup and breaking stuff effectively. There are his career numbers against the Marlins, and they're excellent. Overall, as you saw, 6 and 2, 3.33 earned run average. Almost a hit per inning pitched. But the fact that it's not is a good thing because for his career, he averages more than a hit per inning pitch against everybody else. Right, and when he stays away from walks, that's when he's successful. Bonifacio shows bump, takes a strike. It's one ball and one strike. As you pointed out last night, Tom, the difference in the two games, well, one of the differences is they kept Bonifacio and Reyes off the bases. Last night, whereas in the first game of the series, they did. Yeah, these two guys have combined to score six of the Ooh. runs for the Marlins this year, six of the 21, and Jimmy Rollins just made a fine throw to get Bonifacio for the second out. He is scary fast out of that left side of the batter's box. During the 2012 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. <laughs> so two away. Here's Hanley Ramirez. Two for eight so far in the series and overall is average at 174. Out of everybody who has extended at bats against Blanton in the lineup for the Marlins, he has the best numbers. He's 7 for 19 against Joe. And Joe delivers low, 1 0. His last 28 starts, the Phillies are 19 and 9 in Joe Blanton starts. That's not too shabby. I mean, it says a lot for the offense, but it also says a lot for how well he has complemented everybody else in the Phillies rotation. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Ramirez. At the knees, one ball and two strikes. Well, he's challenging with his fastball tonight. Nelson's getting some heat from the dugout. He just yelled to Eduardo Perez. Will they get used to it? Because that's a good pitch. I love when the crowd mics pick up conversations like that. Yeah, they thought it was low. And that's what he's telling them get used to it. I'm going to call that tonight. To a to the count. Yeah, it's great when they pick that stuff up and it's tells the story. Not R rated or well, something. Well, that's true. Because <laughs> then it's like, uh oh. Nelson is the home plate umpire. The crew chief, Tim Cheat, is over third. Chris was, Cuccione at second was, and Walkie at first. That was very nice. That was polite. Back and forth. Then. In an authoritative way. And, as you would figure one of Tony Perez's sons would conduct himself. Outside, it's three and two. Ramirez last year hit 243. Played in just 92 games for the then Florida Marlins. He had this nagging shoulder injury, which kind of sapped him of his power. It's that one a straightaway center field. The wind will keep it from the warning track. Victorino makes the catch, and it's a 1 2 3 first inning for Joe Blanton. So he retires the Marlins in order on 11 pitches. We go to the bottom of the first. Marlins nothing. Phillies coming up.
three-game series. He's tinkered with it tonight with the left-hander on the mound. Let's take a look at it. It's brought to you by Xfinity, only from Comcast. Leading it off in center field, Shane Victorino. Placido Del Polanco bats second. Jimmy Rollins third, then Hunter Pence in right field batting cleanup. John Mayberry's in left. Ty Wigginton's at first. And then the bottom third of Ruiz Galvis and Joe Blanton. And they'll face 33-year-old left-hander Mark Burley. His first stint in the National League, but he's got really good career numbers against National League hitters. Well, you see he has more hits than innings pitch last year with a 13-9 record, but he's been a premier pitcher in the American League for a long time. Nothing overpowering about him. He's going to try and move the ball around a lot. You see 83 to 87. He uses a lot of change-ups. And you know, you say he's a good pitcher. Well, Roy Halladay has a no-hitter in a perfect game. So is this guy. Well, Joe Blanton does work quick for the Phillies, but Mark Burley is as fast as they get in the game. I mean, yeah. this guy gets it and goes. It's hard to run on. He has 81 pickoffs since 2001. So, you know, he keeps runners close and he keeps his fielders in the game. I'm always interested to see what American League pitchers are like when they came over, come over to the National League. And Burley's doing that this year. As Victorito takes inside, it's 1-0. Last time the Phillies faced him was in a makeup game when they went out to Chicago. Brett Myers got hammered in that game. Jim Tomey was the DH. Ozzie Guillen was the manager. Well, Burley against the National League, 24 and 6 with a 3.32 earned run average. Yeah, 3-0 against the Phillies lifetime. One game, one win was at the vet. There's a breaking ball, one and two. You don't see a lot of that. He's going to he tries to keep hitters off balance. His only game so far this year, he allowed seven hits in, in six innings of work. He wound up being saddled with the loss. That's what you're going to see a lot of also to right handed hitters and throw that dead fish down and away. A lot of changeups. Victorito hits it hard, but right at Hanley Ramirez. And it's one away. Well, it is time now for our Nissan keys to tonight's ball game. Another chilly night with the wind blowing from left field to right field. Mark Burley, he will try to trick you. That's what he's out there to do. Nothing overpowering. As Tom said, he works really fast. And he's tough to run on. 81 pickoffs since 2001. And uh, also 274 GIDPs grounded into double plays. So, you know, he may get a base runner, and he'll throw that ground ball and get two. Well, Placido Polanco has really good numbers against him for his career. Overall, Polly's hitting 222. Two for nine in this series, but against Burley for his career, he's 14 for 35. Most of those numbers Polanco picked up when he was with the Tigers and Burley was with the White Sox. One and two the count. Well, the Phillies in that game on the 30th of August back in 04 hit three homers off him. Tommy, Jason Michaels, and Tomas Perez. It's the only hit Tommy has against him for his career. Phillies lost that game 12 to 8. They'd been in Chicago earlier in the year and gotten into some slugfest with the White Sox and got rained out and had to fly in there, play one game, and then forget where we went after that. Sorry, Wills. Tommy has five hits against two home runs, but. As a pinch hitter, Tommy has one hit against him. Right, and one of the homers in that game, he was a DH in that game. Polanco on the hands, gets it to third. Ramirez throws him out, two outs. Well, this was the 18th perfect game in Major League Baseball history. Mark Burley got some help from Dwayne Wise. Watch him climb the wall. Oh, Scott Pasednik was in left field. He had a great view of it. One of the greatest catches of all time. It really is when you consider what it what was that the second out of the inning or was that the game? That was the second out, yeah. Yep. There's the last out. Ground ball to short. Yeah, Jason Bartlett. And Jimmy Rollins tried to bunt his way on, but bunts a foul. John Buck gave it an effort. It's 0-1. Looks like Hanley Ramirez better be loose down there tonight. He's gonna get some action. Remember when Abraham Nunez was with the Phillies, Charlie Manuel would start him every time Jamie Moyer was on the mound. Because he was the better of the uh, platoon defensively sure. over at third. And it just seemed like he had more action than everybody else. Well, all these right handed hitters, and Burley doesn't throw hard, so they're going to be hammering balls at the shortstop and third base. It's hard, you know, to beat this guy, you have to take him the other way, probably. And that's a lot easier said than done. 
Should be a little out in front. The ball should tail into the stands. It does, and it's one ball and two strikes. Rollins, 286 hitter on the year, but he's four for for nine in this series. Does have two hits against Burley. Two and two to count. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Jessica Gillard of Philadelphia. Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game. Jessica will win hundred dollars. Phillies have two home runs. Wheels count them. Two. I got him. Pence, Pence and Ruiz. Carlos Ruiz. See, it's easy right now to remember them. There's a, there are a lot of numbers, and it's getting tougher after last night. Pence on deck. Carlos waiting for his turn. They thought it was strike three. Infielders are running off the field. We're going to zip it up for a while. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That is strike three. A one, two, three first inning for Burley. He throws 17 pitches to retire the Phils in order. We go to the second. Marlins nothing. Phillies. Philadelphia Philly. Pat made his debut in a Phillies uniform on May 24th in Houston. The year was 2000. The number was 33. And the pitcher he was facing was Octavio Dotel. As he reaches base there, look, Jeff Bagwell's playing first at that time. And then Burrell against Billy Wagner sent one to Towels Hill, right at the top of Towels Hill. And that turned out to be a triple for Pat Burrell. And Pat's been battling foot problems for the last year or so. He decided not to play this year. Who can forget this? Jimmy Rollins said him, you know what's missing in World Series action? He said, what? He goes, you. Well, he was missing no more as he hit that one off the base of the wall. And he wound up getting a double out of it. And that turned out to be as an electric night as you would find in Philadelphia. And then, of course, with David Montgomery asked Pat to lead the Clydesdales. The World Series Championship Parade down Broad Street will officially retire at Philly Wheels during that Red Sox series. Well, it's, it's great that he wanted to do that, that the Phillies offered him the opportunity to do it, and everything's, you know, it's been in the works for a little while, and everything's turned out great. And, you know, it'll be fun to have him here. Be great. Yeah. You know, Pat, uh, Pat's a young guy. You know, it's just a shame that he had these physical problems that he has to quit because he, he should have a lot more years. Sure. 34 years old, I think. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say 33, 34. John Carlos Stanton hits a bullet right at Jimmy Rollins for out number one. So what away? I'm sure the fans will really, really enjoy that night just like we will. Well, one of the greatest uh, events was that parade, seeing <laughs> Pat uh, leading the charge of the Clydesdales. Greg Murphy has more on that, Murph. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. Charlie Manuel was asked, obviously, guys, about Pat Burrell today, and uh, he talked about his couple of his memories of Pat Burrell. Of course, he remembers the big World Series hit, but he says he remembers a game early in Pat's career back when they were playing the Houston Astros and Roger Clemens was on the mound, and Pat Burrell had no success against Clemens so far in his career, and he put him into the lineup, and the reporters asked him, why are you putting Pat Burrell in? He says, because he's due. I can feel it. He's due in this game. He went up first inning, hit a home run. So Charlie Manuel knew Pat Burrell a little bit, and he trusted in him, and why not, right? No, why not? I mean, a lot of the success the Phillies had was because of the guys that were homegrown, like Jimmy Rollins, like Chase Utley, Cole Hamels, Ryan Matson, 
and Pat Burrell. And uh, they had a great relationship though, so I can't tell you how many nights I'll be sitting in Charlie's office just talking, waiting to do the radio show or having done the radio show, and all of a sudden you'd hear Burrell behind us, let's go, let's go. And Charlie would go throw BP to him. <laughs> they worked and worked and worked, and Charlie always had a good feel when to sit Burrell down too when things were not going well. There's a bullet down the right field line that is hooking foul. Ooh. That was just foul, and it was long. This kid's strong boy is Logan Morrison. He could really be a good hitter someday. Two for five in his career against Blanton. It's on the Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Nationals in ten innings upended the Reds three to two. Reds tied that game up with two in the top of the ninth against Brad Lidge. And then they won it on a wild pitch. Ryan Zerman scored from third on a wild pitch. On an 0 2 count. One and two, the count to Logan Morrison. And up. Must have missed outside. And a ball. Now he threw, ball at wheels. he threw that left hand out there to tell you it was outside. I don't think he's going to come up with a right hand, though. So back to our breaking ball, and it's outside. You see the left hand from Nelson go to show that the pitch is outside. To left field, playable for John Mayberry. Kind of the same pitch, nearly the same location, but a fastball. Speaking of those nationals, they'll be in town Monday, May 21st, for a three game series. It's one of our Hatfield Dollar Dog Nights, as is tonight's. It'll be Tuesday, the 22nd. Get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. So two away. Here's Gabby Sanchez, 0 for three so far in the series. Or I should say 0 for three in uh, last night's game. Two for seven overall. Average of 150. Joe's pitching ahead of hitters a lot tonight. He's he's a, he's very aggressive with his fastball. You know, a lot of nights you'll see him not as aggressive with his fastball and fall behind in the count. Tonight he's not doing that. There's the one-one Sanchez. That one drops in for a strike, curveball, and it's one and two. And then he can use his other stuff very effectively. So when you fall behind, you know that off-speed stuff just isn't as effective because they can take it or handle it a little bit better, and not be as full. Got him right down the chute. A 91 mile an hour fastball, and he gets Gabby Sanchez looking. And he rings him up, finishes up this second. One, two, three, go the Marlins. That's as good a pitch as you'll see for Blatt with great movement at the end.
subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Phillies out of market game live online or on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit Phillies.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. Hunter Pence will start things off for the Phillies. He's hitting four straight. His average of 368. A home run and four RBIs. And he takes outside. It's 1 0. Pence has four hits in this series. Change ups, change ups. Got him out in front of that pitch. It's two and one. He just doesn't want to give in. You know, if not, he doesn't want to give in. He doesn't. It's another change up. Two and oh. Throws a change up. He's had a good career. He's won 161 games and in the American League, although some of the, uh, the, the pitchers from 20 or 30 years ago would cringe at this. He has a pretty good earned run average of 3.82 for his career. In the American League, right, with that DH. Now there he just came inside. We haven't seen much of that. You would think he has to do that once in a while. You see the career leaders in strikeouts. He's fourth in the White Sox for the White Sox all time. He's eighth in wins and innings pitched. A little roller to third. And Ramirez just gets Hunter Pence. Billy Pierce was just the opposite of Burley. He was a left-hander, but he threw hard. He's their all-time strikeout leader. So one away. Here's John Mayberry. The conditions tonight getting better. And uh, 57 degrees, and partly cloudy. There is a, a breeze, but it's nowhere near the wind gusts that we've seen the last several days. We hear it's supposed to die down tonight and then just get cold. So there's frost warnings tonight. That your plants in. Not that kind of frost. I was going to say, I thought it was supposed to be in the 70s this weekend. It is, but not tonight. Yeah. It's going to be, I think by Monday, it's supposed to be 85. Nice. There's some home runs right there. That's what I'm going to plant my uh, flowers with. Yeah, yeah well, you, before gonna I leave. Yeah, you're going to have to do it. I was going to say, you're going to have a tough time planting on Monday. <laughs> 3,000 miles away. Here's the 1 1 to Mayberry. Out oh. in front, 1 and 2. You know, they. And it's it's you know this game is so hard to play but if you're sitting over there watching you can't be up there looking for fastballs because he's just throwing one change up after another I think they'll jam you with one and he finally comes inside with a fastball at 87 well Burley's a great story too you think about baseball in terms of where guys are drafted. A lot of guys that are in the big leagues right now are either free agent signings from Latin countries or they're high draft picks. Well, Burley was a 38th round draft pick by the White Sox. And he just got Mayberry on strikes, and there are two out, second strikeout. And this year he became a coveted free agent, if only because of his durability uh, and because he's a different kind of pitcher than anybody else the Marlins have. He made his major league debut in 2000. He signed a four year, $58 million contract with the Marlins this offseason. You can see the way he's wearing him out with this off speed stuff. Away. Ty Wiggerton goes after a curveball, and he pops it up toward first. Sanchez is there. And it's another 1 2 3 inning for Mark Burley. So the Phillies go down in order for a second straight inning. We're through two. Here's the
log on to phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. And Wheels, please submit your answer on the subject line. The question is, on April 12th, 1965, the Phillies played the Astros in the first regular season game at the Astrodome. What other significant event happened that day? The answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. Wheels, there are the flowers. They're going to heed your warning. It's going to be a frost warning tonight. Ah, it's not that big. It won't be a frost frost. So they said the wind could die down and get very chilly tonight. Might have a frost warning for the golfers tomorrow morning. You know, a frost delay. A little delay, half hour delay. Like we had the other day. Here's Omar Infante. And he takes low. It's one ball and no strikes. Infante, three for seven. By the way, I'm going to lose wheels for at least a half an inning because he's oh, trying to figure out is. what the event is. I just in thought of what it is. I did. <laughs> I, I just hit me, but I think I got it. <laughs> Wasn't something that just jumped right out at it. Uh, may, may be to the fans because this is for the fans. Right. What a one the count. Center field. Playable for Victorito. At least it is now. He didn't see it right away, but Pence did, and he was right there. One <laughs> Wills, Look welcome to it. your first Hatfield Dollar Dog Night of the year. Here they Smiley's come. here with the Hi, Fanatic. Smiley. It's nice to see Smiley. Smiley will be around for uh, a good part of this year with the Fanatic. will be shooting those hot dogs all over the field. <laughs> Wills, have yourself a dog or yeah. 18 of them. Thank you. Thank you, Smiley. How many do you think you can eat in like one season, one. like one night? One. That's it? Yeah, I would do it. We should have a contest. There, there was Fanatic, a... what do you think about that? See how Wheels, how many Wheels one. could eat? How about, there was a time, though, where, uh, yeah, I would Really good about the take. <laughs> well, Smiley, we welcome you back to Citizens Bank Park. Fanatic, you're always welcome. Saw the Fanatic doing a photo shoot today. Very photogenic. <laughs> Very photogenic. See, if we throw them to the fans now, we're going to hit somebody in the back of the head. Yeah. There's some of the kids off to our left that are aware of it now, but it's too far to throw them. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Could, could hurt somebody. Oh, nice catch. See that catch, Wheels? No. I just threw it that to a guy had a good catch. So we get a miss. And it's one and two. There we go. Oh, it's a tip shot. There we go. Guy with a good hat. The Yoda hat. There we go. Making the fans happy, Wills. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Buck hits it to third. That's a fair ball over the bag and down the left field line. Mayberry will get to it, but Buck will get to second. And it's a one out double first hit of the night. Well, Smiley Fanatic, we appreciate your time tonight. We look forward to. Uh, Hatfield Dollar Dog Nights throughout. <laughs> I think that's littering, fanatic. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Wheels did it. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Get out of here. Wheels. The <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. See you, Smiley. <laughs> oh boy. There's some chaos right there. Mark Burley. 102 career hitter wheels, but he does have a home run. Yes, he does. Two runs batted in. 49 career at bats. Not up there to bunt, of course, because there's already one out, so they want him to swing here. Never know. And he does swing. Galvis, oh, he gets to a diving stop, a tumble, and a throw. Dug out by Wigginton. What a play by Freddie Galvis. And give some credit to Ty Wigginton as well. Two outs here in the third. He well, has yeah, just great range, you know, a shortstop playing second base, and you just don't teach that. Had the pitcher running, so, you know, Burley doesn't run that well, but he hustled. Freddie had a jump up. He took a little peek at third, and then nice job by Ty Wigginton on the other, and there he is, full extension, and now he tumbles over and still pops up and throws him out. What a great play. Anybody who doesn't think that this kid could play defensively, I mean, he's <laughs> remarkable. In all honesty, that exchange right there, it, and it's different from night to night, whoever's at first base. That's a big time play. Yeah, and he needed help on the other end because, he, you know, how much could he get on that throw? Here's Jose Reyes, and Reyes takes low. It's 1 0. I told somebody the other day if you go through the National League East, He's the best defensive second baseman, at least in the National League East. Well, he's really a good. He's really a good player out there defensively. There's a good changeup, and and what a relief for Joe Bland. It looked like Freddie. It looked like a hit, 
and then it looked like he was going to be able to keep it in the infield so that the runner couldn't score buck couldn't score and as it turns out it's two outs. One and one the count. Outside two and one Reyes grounded out his first time up. Well, now you you know with by doing what he was able to do and getting him out there now you're in a situation you don't have to strike Reyes out just get him out and you're out of the inning. Threatening here in the third, the 2 2. He just barely missed from getting Reyes. Ruiz couldn't hang on. He threw him a breaking ball there. It looked like now he really has him set up to throw a change up, I think. Go down and away from him and see if he can get Reyes because he will chase. Oh, he just got that on the end of the bat. Just tipped it. Yeah, maybe they want to go change up here. Wiggle the fingers to it to the count. Line drive toward right field. Here comes Pence. Makes the sliding grab, and Blanton gets out of a jam here in the third. Great defense by the Phillies. It was a huge part of the formula of success last year, and it certainly was here in the third. Freddie Galvis robbed Mark Burley of a base hit and maybe an RBI, and Hunter Pence did the same against Jose Reyes. Well, back here at Citizens Bank Park, scoreless game as we go to the bottom of the third. Carlos Ruiz will settle in against Mark Burley. Ruiz, Galvis, and Blanton. Billy's looking for their first hit of the night after reaching double digits last night. Carlos off to a torrid start. And he's behind 0 2. Carlos two for seven in the series. However, 462 on the year. Hit a ball last night would have been a home run a lot of nights here later in the year, and then he finally did hit one. Back toward the middle. Nice play by Proley. And one way. He is good. He's won three Rawlings gold gloves. Now speaking of the release home run, it's time for the course like cold hard blast, Wheels. Well. Talk about his home run, and there it is. Took the shorter part of the yard to hit that one last night. Left center into the first row. Cold hard blast brought to you by Frostbrook Coors Light.
Jim Cotts here tonight, who of course was a great major league player, and oh, he's close to getting into the Hall of Fame. He won 16 of 16, those. I was going to say 17, but, yeah. but Maddox passed him. Yes. Right? I asked him tonight, how many are you winning? 16. Galvis triples one to third, and there are two outs. Well, I asked uh, Jim Cott several years ago, what's the key to being a good defensive pitcher? He said, you need to be ready. Yeah. When you get rid of the ball, you need to be in a good fielding position, particularly if you're a ground ball pitcher. There he is. Bob Costas tonight. James Lee Cott, one of the really great guys in the game and tremendous pitcher. And of course, Bob Costas right there. Tremendous broadcaster. Steve Kaiser, the stage manager, having some ice cream in the background. Well, you know, they can do that. Joe Blanton takes a strike. It's 0 1. Of course, when Jim Cott walked by the door today, Sarge looked at me and said, Hey, man, how did I do against him? Yeah, we looked it up, right? He did never hit well. a homer off him. No, he did very well, though. Kitty thought that he had probably hit a few off him. Jim Cott remembered pitching a game against the Phillies, or with the Phillies, against the Giants when Sarge was with the Giants, when Cott got three hits himself. And darn it, we looked it up, and he did. Joe Blanton trying to get his first hit and he's thrown out by Reyes. So an easy hitting for Mark Burley. Nine up nine down against the Phils. We've completed three. We go to the fourth as we mentioned El Sargento will be here when we get back. Chevrolet. See your local Chevy dealer. Visit ChevyDealer.com. Buy W.B. Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW for an appointment. And buy Nissan. Get to a Nissan dealer for great deals on innovation you can count on. Innovation for all. Pretty comfortable night here at the ballpark. Phillies and the Marlins wrap up this three-game set. A scoreless game. Two, three, and four for the Marlins. Emilio Bonifacio, Henry Ramirez, John Carlos Stanton. And it's one and oh to Bonifacio. Grounded out to short his first time up. A good play by J Roll, ranging to the middle. See how Polanco's in on the grass for him. And a slug bunt attempt, anyway. That's that swinging bunt. Want the infielders to come in, and they don't mind. Almost really take almost a full swing, slapping that ball somewhere to right field. I'm sorry, to left field. I'll be honest with you. The way he went after it, I think he would have been happy if he did get it to right field. Yeah. Well, you know, he's going to be running toward first base. So if that ball is out over the plate, 
or inside, he has a better chance to hit it as opposed to outside. Takes a strike and it's two and two. Botafacio's hit in 10 of his last 11 against the Phillies. That dates back to last year. Ground ball to first. Easy hop for Ty Wigginton. And we've got one out here in the top of the fourth. Henley Ramirez is due up. All right, Sarge. Well, it's been pretty quick so far for both of these pitchers. Yeah, pretty quick. Uh, and both guys are around the plate, which I, I really like. For us, though, on the offense, I really think they need to get a little bit closer I to knew the you plate. I to say that. Well, I knew again, it, but you're it's right. just that you see all the balls that he's throwing. It's just a way, a way, a way. So what you do, you take away that pitch. He can throw the ball by you, but you stay where you are. Guess what? At the end of the night, you're going to have yourself a comfortable over four. Okay. <laughs> well, let's hope they can get some base runners against Burley because Flatten's pitching very well so far as Ramirez gets one in on the hands and he hits it to deep center field. Victorino venturing back and he makes the catch. I don't even think he hit them in the sweet part of the back. Well, he's one of those guys that doesn't have to. This guy's got great mechanics and just a matter of time before he ends up getting really hot. You can tell because he's hitting balls to center field. You can see that oh. just missed that ball, but it wasn't in on the hand from hitting it? it out. Take a look at Victorino as he shows why he is a gold glover. Look at that. Look at that replay. He didn't hit it. He didn't square it up totally, but it was definitely wasn't in on the hands. Now, once he start to square those balls up, now you're talking about two or three home runs in a series, and before it's all said and done, he'll be doing that. Good pitch. He knows he just missed it. That same pitch, though, if you're thinking about really trying to hit that ball just hard up the middle or the other way, he'll catch all of that. That angle will be a little bit different. Two and one, the count to Stanton. He grounded it short. His only time up hits that the opposite way. Off the glove of Wigginton, picked up by Galvis. The play is made to Blanton. That's good recovery on both ends. The fact that Blanton got over there, you can mark that down as 3 4 1. It's a 1 2 3 top of the fourth. Green Mountain Coffee. K Cups delivered in all the flavors you love by who? But W.B. Mason. All half of the fourth. Top of the order. Victorino leads it off. Chain grounded out to third. His first time up. 
And the Ramirez starts as four assists. Well, I told you too, again, guys are rolling over. This is the type of pitcher you really want to try and hopefully be up the middle on. You don't want to pull them because you end up pulling balls that are really soft and they're ground balls. That's the one you want. But you're not going to get it that often. Well, you, you stay there, though, for two strikes. Then after that, you go on and, and you protect. But the pitchers that don't even throw fastballs will throw them. Jamie Moore, you will throw them. Oh. That, that one's deep to left field. Morrison going back. Forget about that one. Long home run for Shane Victorino. And the Phillies strike first tonight. They're on top one to nothing with their first hit of the game. Would have to think that was a curveball, and not only that, that curveball is probably coming right into the swing. That's just a good swing by Victorino. He goes out to get that ball as it was on the outside part, hits it out of the ballpark. Polacco sends one to right field. Stanton going back, and he'll make the catch. So one away. By the way, that home run by Victorino is first of the year, and it makes a winner out of Jessica Gallard of Philadelphia. She's won hundred dollars courtesy of the McDonald's home run jackpot. Look at his foot, how his foot is down, but eyes focused out over the plate. You know, he guessed really right. He threw a fastball in to set him up so he could go away. Victorino up to the task as he's talking about how he did that and put a good swing on it. Now Rollins with one out, one in. Victorino, his first extra base hit. Of the season. Can't be afraid to hit with two strikes with this type of a pitcher. You know, more than not, if you're just going to be swinging, swinging, you'll be swinging at his pitch because he'll be on the corners just like the pitch that you just saw. Two and two, the count to Rollins. I think Jimmy's set up good for a pitcher like this, though, Sarge, because he's very close to the plate anyway. He's all, all already on the plate, just needs to go through the ball, stay on the outside. Hello. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By Citizens Bank, we're for homes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan. That's right for you. By the Pennsylvania Lottery. Play the new instant game for the Pennsylvania Lottery. Wild 10s must be 18 years or older to play. Please play responsibly and buy your local Honda dealer. One out. Phillies with two hits in the inning, including a home run. Hunter Pence the batter. And he takes outside. It's 1-0. Oh. Well, guys, the whole team trying to get double-digit hits again. Well, if you can do that, you can take your chance. You know, 11, 12 hits. Doesn't always have to be the 14 or more. There we go. Deep to left field. Down toward the corner. Will it get out? It is off the base of the wall. Rollins to third. It'll be held up there. It tips off the glove of Reyes. Rollins going to try to score. The throw by Infante. What a play. And Rollins is out at the plates. Wow. Omar Infante reacted well. And even as he was tumbling to the ground, he made a very clean throw to John Buck. Well, he needed that to be able to get Jimmy Rollins going in the home plate. As you can see, Infante taking that deep breath. Jay will reads this all the way. Did need to coach. Now he's stopping. He's taking a look at that. He's looking all the way. That's just a terrific play by Infante. That ball off either way. You can see he told him to stay, but up to the runner there. Judgment. And he is DOA at home plate as he tries to get around it. Boy, as an afterthought, you go, oh, boy, why didn't you just stay there? But, you know, a base runner, you'll take your chance on that and going in and trying to score. Well, I, I, I don't think it's a bad play at all, even though he was thrown uh, out. Now, if it's no score, 0-0, zero, zero, then I'd say, yeah, you got to make sure that you end up getting a run. Well, they're going to get a run here. Pence around third on the base hit by Mayberry, and the Phillies will take a 2 nothing lead. John Mayberry stayed inside, and he was able to loop it to left for the RBI single. He's now at four 
hits of the inning after going through the lineup without a hit the first time. Yeah, pretty good adjustment there from that very first inning. Very aggressive on the first string as Mayberry puts those hands and gets them through, driving the ball into left field. Now Wigginson, who lifts it to shallow left. Morrison started back. He's got a long run in, but he's there. And the inning is over. But the Phillies do get two. An RBI single by Mayberry capped the inning, but Shane Victorino's home run began the inning. It was the first of the year for the flying Hawaiian, and he's helped give the Phils a 2 0 lead. Michael Barkhead and Philly's top sports writers have plenty of stuff to talk about. Watch the best talk of Philly sports at Delhi News Live tomorrow at 5, only on Comcast Sports. Got Greg Murphy will be on Delhi News Live tomorrow. Sorry, so make okay. sure you tune in. Show some support for you, Power. I sure will. Logan Morrison leads it off. Fly to left his first time up. Another first pitch strike for Big Joe Blanton. More importantly, though, that location. Even these pitches that are are balls, I mean, they're just off the plate, just barely. And those become very effective because the hitter does get anxious. Pretty good pitch. Just reached 50 pitches on the night. And obviously, Joe's one of those guys can't not live in the middle of the plate. You know, you throw that ball hard every now and then. If you're a Verlander, you can get away with it. No, he didn't get away with it last night or yesterday against the uh, Rays in the ninth inning. Bad example. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. No, he, but every, he, every, was, he was dealing up until that ninth inning, though. This guy potentially can throw a no hitter every time he goes out there on the mound. Well, it's a beautiful sight to be back here in Philadelphia. Phillies will wrap up the series against the Marlins, and then tomorrow the Mets come to town. In fact, the Mets are uh, probably already in town. Gabby Sanchez swings at the first pitch, pops it, shallow center. Rollins is back there. Two outs. Fans, next time you want to catch a Phillies game, head to StubHub, where you'll find the seats you want and the freedom to choose where you want to sit. StubHub is the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Phillies. Sorry, I used StubHub last week in Pittsburgh.
Got some really good seats. They do. For the fireworks night at PNC Park. Yeah. Well, we all have uh, our different sources. I just went on and used the traveling secretary to <laughs> meet Frank Openbagger. <laughs> Omar Infante takes upstairs. I don't think I've ever seen you wear that hat. No. Green hat. I don't know if I have a. Well, do. I do have a green yeah, we hat. We wore green for St. Patrick's Day. That's right. And you startled everybody when we hadn't seen you in a little while, and you walked in, and you had a, a hat that matched perfectly to the shirt we were wearing. Well, you got a new shipment of hats in, Tom, so that color happened to be in there. Infante takes high. Well, here's the thing. I guess if, you, if you're going to have a certain style, you have to be able to back it up. Well, well listen, I just honestly went right to the closet and kind of just grabbed something <laughs> out of there, and it ended up matching. Infante out in front, but he sends that a pretty good ways to left center field, and it's going to be over the head of Victorino and Mayberry. Infante has become an extra base machine to start this year. That's a seventh extra base hit. It's his third double. Well, you're right. He is off to a good start, but it's a decent hitter. Stays through the ball. You know, when he's hitting in a position where he doesn't have a whole lot of pressure hitting there, but he sure is driving the ball as he drives that ball right near the 387 mark. Buck doubled his first time up, left over third, thanks to some good defense by the Phillies. Well, it doesn't have to give in to him with the two outs. You have Burley that's on deck, so take your chances if you fall behind, which he doesn't. He's been pounding the strike zone. Try to get him to go fish a little bit. Right. We want to make sure though that he doesn't square any ball up. Even if you get out, it's right at him. I mean, you want to make sure that he hits your pitch with the pitcher coming up next. One ball, one strike to count to Buck. Looper, right center field. Here comes Penn sliding attempt. Did he hang on? Nope, he dropped it. A run will score. It'll be an RBI single for Buck. And it's a 2 1 game. I think that ball was almost in his glove. Maybe he didn't really realize it after he dove or went into that slide. Unreal. Take a look at it as he comes in now. You know, he shined away there and he didn't almost like he didn't see the ball. Same as Stanton last night. And you're right, he didn't see it. You can tell there's a little clap there by Buck. It's just uh, some pretty good hitting, though. I mean, in the right place. Good pitch, though, by Joe. Well, now Burley, who's ahead one ball and no strikes, retired on a fine play by Freddie Galvis's only time up. And it's one ball and one strike to count. Just hate to see a eighth hitter get an RBI with the pitcher coming up, and it, especially with two outs. Wondering if maybe Hunter is going to have them uh, adjust the lights. Called strike three, a breaking pitch to Burley. The side is retired. The Marlins did get one and an RBI single by John Buck. Phillies lead it two to one as we go to the bottom of the fifth.
Chicago Cubs will start a four game series. It includes the Fanatics birthday brought to you by Citizens Bank. A free Fanatic Bank for fans 14 and under. Monday the 30th is a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night. Go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets today. Yesterday the Fanatic was uh, was helping folks recognize how cool it is to take the train to the game. Folks in SEPTA want to remind you that one of the easiest ways to come to the ballpark is to take the SEPTA, the Broad Street Line. It's pretty quick. It's convenient. You can park in Center City or it does go out to the suburbs as well. I'm looking at that traffic here the last couple of days. I need to add maybe a few more trains. It was pretty crowded here yesterday. Oh boy. Wasn't it? To an O the count to Carlos Ruiz. Well, you figure that Flyers and the Sixers, Flyers already in the playoffs, and the Sixers hopefully getting to the playoffs and being there for a long time. Even more crowded around here. Two and one the count to Ruiz. Make it three and one. By the way, the Cubs, as we look at the Toyota Major League scoreboard, they put a, uh, a thumping on the Milwaukee Brewers today. Zach Granke. Eight nothing. Matt Garza against Granke. There you go. Eight runs on 13 hits. Garza, eight and two thirds, nine strikeouts. Garza's a pretty good pitcher. Tell you what, that Granky though in Milwaukee, he's tough to beat. Get him away from there, he seems to be a little bit easier. Ruiz way out in front. Morrison is playing very deep. And there's one out. Now Burley knows once he's end up getting that hitter and he doesn't have the balance, he's done his job. Hey, this guy throws a lot of innings. I mean, 11 years in a row over 200 innings. I mean that's a workhorse. So he goes out. You can count on him, and those are the type of guys you do like to have, you know, on your team. Every pitcher isn't going to be able to throw the ball by someone. I think one of the interesting things too, Sarge, is that people talk about inning eaters. Some of those guys aren't as successful as Burley has been in his career. Exactly. Galvis hits it in the air to deep left field. Morrison going back. He'll make the play. And there are two outs. So two away. It'll bring Joe Blatt to the plate. Saw earlier Shane Victorino hit his first home run. The Phillies have three home runs this year. They've scored 17 runs. Charlie was asked about that earlier today. Not only about the Phillies offense, but also around baseball. And Murph and I were down in the dugout. Murph, uh, I thought he was pretty poignant with some of his some of his topics that he was talking about. Yeah, it was very interesting. You know, talking about scoring down amongst uh, all the Major League Baseball teams right now early in this season. He was asked why he thought that was, and he said to him, it's really all about the pitching. You know, these guys are getting better and better. They're getting better scouting reports on the hitters. They're using more pitches. He said, hey, some guys have three fastballs. They have a two-seamer, a three-seamer, and you know, and they throw them well and they're able to locate, and he thinks that's why right now pitching is so far ahead of offense. Well, Joe Blatton out in front. Ramirez there again. Side is retired. But guys like Mark Burley, they have all kinds of pitches, and he's showing that tonight. The Phillies, though, got two in the fourth. We go to the sixth. They lead it two to one.
great start. The first two wins of the Phillies 2012 season came from the right hand of Roy Halladay. In his first two starts of the season, he was in total command as usual, allowing just seven hits and one earned run over 15 innings. No better way to start a season than handing the ball to Doc. And his top-notch performances are brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Now more than ever, we're here for you every step of the way. Well, Joe Bland is trying to match what Doc did in last night's ball game. It's 2-1 Phillies as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Yeah, Tom, I'm just going to touch on exactly what Murph was talking about with the pitching. Pitching is a little bit better, but I think the game plan for the hitters aren't the way that they should be. If we're looking fastball, whether or not it was a two-seamer cutter or whatever it might be, we're going to put a good swing on it. So we're looking for hard as opposed to soft. You know, if it's soft, doesn't matter if it's a changeup. Or curveball that's soft. Major League hitters should be able to make the adjustment. Reyes hits one on one hop off the glove of Galvis and into right field. So he's aboard for the first time in two games. I think it's the first time this year that Freddie Galvis has not made a play that was hit at him. We'll see how Jay Dunn scores that one. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough play. I almost thought this particular ball, he let play him where he didn't know exactly if he wanted to come in. Or stay back after that. The ball just ate him up. Well, it was an error. You know, he did get it from the side, but you could tell the way it was hit. Had top spin on it. See, uh, chase up. He get in front of those and that iron chest of his. Let it hit him and then uh, pick it up and throw it. That ball was smoked. All right, now does Bonifacio give Reyes a chance to steal, Absolutely. or does he try to bunt? He, uh, for me, you give him a chance to go on and, and steal and see how that they will play that. Sometimes they might want to bunt and have him uh, uh, bunt and run it's with two fast runners. First pitch strike to Bonifacio. Joey Cora, who's managing for Ozzie Guillen. Guillen was suspended by the Florida Marlins for his comments. In a Time magazine piece praising Fidel Castro. He is here in Philadelphia and he'll go back with the team tonight to Florida. But if Asio bunts and it goes foul, it's 0 2. Bunting for a hit as opposed to the sacrifice. See signs as he's displaying those. Not usually Reyes, who is a, an accomplished base dealer. He won't have a sign. He, he's on his own. He can go whatever he wants, steal whatever bag he wants to, uh, to try and steal, whether or not it's third base. Back toward the middle. Rollins was shallow. He gets there, steps on second. They won't get two. That was still a good play. He was spinning his wheels around the second base bag. So he gets the lead runner. It's really hard to double up by the Reyes or Bonifacio. Oh, and that ball right on you as the runner's coming on you. But I think if he doesn't slip, he ends up making that play. You can see just end up going across the bag there, Bonifacio. But see what it does, though, gives them another leadoff hitter when you have back-to-back -back guys that can steal bases, sort of the way that well, back in the day you had Jay Rowe and Victorino kind of hitting back-to-back. -back. Now I would think that Bonifacio, who was stolen for without being caught, will try to take off. I think Ruiz reminded Blanton of that, made sure he threw over a couple times. Now, and as a hitter, you want to stay with your strength. So, in other words, if it's a pitch that you're looking for, you want to go on and put a good swing on it. If it's an off-speed pitch, you go on and elect to maybe take a chance to see if the base runner can steal that base. Includes four for four this year for Bonifacio. He started to go and then stopped. At least he made a movement to go. That is one ball and no strikes to Hanley Ramirez. And these are the times when these hitters become dangerous. You three, four, five guys. When you have base runners on there, the pitcher has to split. 
the concentration. Up and in, 2 and 0. Oh. I think it's the first time tonight he's run a 2 0 -oh count. If not the first time, it's only one of a couple of times. Well, he's aware that Ramirez has been close to really hitting the ball out of the ballpark. And he's swinging a lot better. Pitchers know that too. Still a situation for me. You don't give in to him. Pete McCannon is the one who's signaling to Carlos Ruiz about what he wants them to do, whether throw over. There's the signal. First 3 0 count of the night for Blatt. And the pitch. We threw a curve. Unbelievable. That's pitching backwards, and that's a pretty good pitch as Ramirez, you can see that his legs flinch, and that's after having a couple of balls thrown inside that were somewhat tight. And all of a sudden you get that hard breaking ball. Most hitters are gonna come off the ball a little bit as it settles in for a strike. All four. So runners on first and second with one out. The New York Mets will be in town this weekend, but they'll also visit the Phillies on Monday, May 7th for a three game series. All three games at 7.05. Tuesday, the 8th, is the Asian Pacific celebration. You can get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. Here's Jean. Here's uh, Giancarlo Stan. Two. Looking for a ground ball someplace there, hopefully for that double play. Curve ball line caught by Galvis. What a play. He tries to double up Ramirez, but can't. That ball was scorched off well, the bat of Stanton. Wait, such a great play, and you're right, it was scorched. Stanton does hit the ball hard. I thought he would have had a good chance. As they're saying, Freddie, Freddie, if he had to thrown that ball to shortstop, I thought that might have been an easier play. Take a look at it. This ball is hit hard, almost spins him around as if he's a top. He has the mind, though, to throw that ball to first. There it is again. And a good throw. I thought he was the cover man at second. So he had a, he was kind of moving every which way and had to make that play. I have to get that Ty Wigginson something soft in his glove there so he can hold on to those balls. Well, here's Logan Morrison. Swing a foul tip. Looks like a little cutter there. A great spot. Coming up with some good pitches here. Joe, big Joe Blanton. Oh, and Stanton hits the ball. You can hear it almost all over the ballpark. He hits them so hard. Good pitch. Good spot. Good velocity. Yeah, what he'll do a lot of times, he'll expand that zone, go a little bit further away, or he can come in off the plate. I don't know if you want to mess around inside, however, with this Morrison. Well, they go off the plate. Blanton makes the play from the side of the mound. Oh, he threw wide. Did Wigginson hang on? He did! What a play by Ty Wigginson. I think he found something soft there, Sarge. Well, just in the nick of time. <laughs> One three on the put up. Man, the Phillies are flipping some leather in this ball game tonight. For the Marlins, no runs. One hit, two bad left, and a huge stretch by Ty Wigginson that'll take us to the bottom of the sixth.
sixth inning. Phillies are on top two to one. Shane Victorino lead it off against Mark Burley. Homered his last time up, and it's 0 1 to Victorino. And he bunts up the third base line. It's a beauty. Bareheaded by Ramirez, and he just got it. It was a beauty. And if it was a little slower, it would have been even better. Yeah, it was almost a line drive. You hit it so hard. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that ball was. That's where you want to go, though, down the line. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Acura. Acura Advance by AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Toyota. Every new Toyota purchase comes with Toyota Care. Great idea. It's a great idea. To be able to, I mean, to get on base to maybe try and steal a base, but just a little bit too hard. Execution, the right thought process, going right down the line. If it's not so hard, he ends up getting the hit out. Now, on the flip side, if I were to say to Yard, he homered his last time up. I mean, does that make it a, a better idea because they're thinking he's not going to do it even more? Depending or? on where you're hitting, and it's okay for him as a leadoff hitter. My thinking, however, for me, after I've squared a ball up, I Square feel up another one. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it pretty good. He took the first pitch that was really a hittable pitch, bunted a ball that came inside. He's on if he doesn't bunt it that hard. Polanco tied up. It's two balls and two strikes. But that was his game plan to go up there and, you know, try and bunt to be able to get on. I don't like guys to bunt when they already have a strike on them, uh, for sure, because now you're, you're right in the hole with. Having another strike, even if it's foul, going uh, no balls and two strikes. Phillies with two runs on four hits this evening. Marlins with a run on three hits. Three and two, the count to Polanco. Deck. Burley will give you a pitch to hit. Not surprising that he has eight ground outs. Yeah. Most of those ground outs are on balls that would be away and kind of down. The guys are a little bit out in front of. Well, they've squared some some balls up, so they have made some adjustments there at the plate. What this game is, you got to make adjustments. Defeated baseball's crowd after all these foul balls. Well, like Blanco, just able to wait back and see the ball. You can do that when a guy is able to throw that ball by you. It's a liner to center that's going to drop in front of Bonifacio for Polanco's first to the B. That's good hitting right there if you go through the ball. Good hitters are going to get jammed. Now the fan in Philly's mural sweepstakes. It's your chance to be part of Philly's history as one fan will be included as part of the crowd seed of the Philly's mural celebrating the history of, Phil of the Philadelphia Phillies. See the mural sweepstakes at phillies.com slash mural to enter. Open only to residents of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Hurry, deadline is Monday at 5 p.m. Ball is popped toward Infante for the second out. By the way, the Phillies mural was created by uh, David McShane, who we, you and I met uh, in Clearwater. We painted different parts of that mural. Yeah. There is the uh, rendering of the mural created by David McShane and the City of Philadelphia Mural Arts Program. The mural Arts Program began some years ago to cover up some of the graffiti around the city, and it's turned into, well, some of the best artwork you'll see around the country. I tell you, once you got started on that, it was pretty difficult to leave it. You wanted to. Stay there. Make sure you were painting between the lines. Pence hits it toward third. Foul ball. Really surprised that was a foul ball. Tip Cheetah, the crew chief, was right on it. I can see too. Ramirez is almost 
playing on the line. And you know from the right-handed hitter, especially any guys that can pull the ball because Burley does throw soft, that you're going to pull a lot of balls. Usually those pitches that are coming in side will be balls from Burley the left hander. He doesn't want to live even on the inside part of the plate for a strike. He wants it off the plate. Good eye. And Hunter Pence he only knows one speed and that is fast. Opposite way, another base hit. Polanco will hold up at second. Stanton, although he bobbled it, has a cannon. So two on with two outs. Marlins do have bullpen action behind Mark Burley, even though he's only thrown 78 pitches. Randy St. Clair, who's sitting down. Ryan Webb is the righty. Mike Dunn is the lefty. Well, that's just good hitting by Hunter Pence. Being able to take that ball the other way. We don't see him hit a lot of balls to to right field. That's a good sign too. And good sign that he continues to hit the ball hard. John Mayberry's one for two. One ball, no strikes. He can get big job and swinging that bat where he's hit that ball out of the ballpark or more so just consistently hitting it hard or finding some gaps. He's driven in one tonight. It's his first run batted in of the year. You know, they're pounding him in so much that he's getting very conscious of it. Just about all the pitchers are really throwing inside to him. And to make him stop that, very simple. You got to start to turn on some of those balls or start to hit them, especially if they're strikes. Yeah, he first came up, he wasn't swinging at a lot of balls on the inside. He was very disciplined. That one up. Shallow left field. Reyes is out there. And the inning is over. The Phillies leave a couple here in their half of the sixth inning. No runs, two hits, two men left. On to the seventh. Joe Blanton and Mark Burley battling pretty closely.
So far tonight is allowed just three hits in a row. And Sanchez takes strike one. His fastball has been 90 or 91 most of the night. It has not deviated, has not gone lower. It might have hit 92 once or twice. I think he's been aggressive with it tonight, too, especially early in this game. He established it. The you know, one thing that killed him was giving up a two out run with a base open and the pitcher on deck. You know, he, he did jam him a little bit, it looked like, and hit the flare out there, but still, you just don't want to get hurt in that spot in a close game. He got that one into the kitchen of Gabby Sanchez. It's a towering pop up. Foul territory. Polanco makes the catch for the first down. Well, these lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They were to see the prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Antonio Bastardo, Michael Stutes, both warming in the pen. Well, you know, they're getting ready, obviously, if Blanton has any trouble in this inning. And then when you get to the, hopefully get to the eighth with a lead, we'll see where they go. Fonte takes strike one. And Qualls is the guy who's supposed to, you know, be the most experienced eighth inning guy they have. And whether or not he can go back to back games, he should be able to. At least that's what the thought is, that yeah. he's feeling pretty good. He's always been able to do it before. Fonte went fishing. Another pop up into foul territory. This one for Ruiz. I love it when the fans, before the play is even made, you can hear the rise of Chuch. Yeah, and another fastball. Good fastball tonight and good location and very aggressive with it. There's Joe's numbers. Good ball strike ratio, only 81 pitches. And both these pitchers have thrown the ball over the plate tonight, and this game has been flying because these hitters are very aggressive because they have strikes to hit. Or at least they're close to strikes in Burley's case. There's John Buck. He has two hits tonight. He takes a breaking ball for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Well, he has that two out hit I was talking about with the base open and two outs. You know, they could have walked him there, but, you know, Charlie decides, all right, I trust Joe Blanton and Carlos Ruiz here. They're not going to get hurt in this spot. And, you know, he just flared one out there and got the runner. How about the defense in the inning, though? I know Freddie Galvis made an error, but beyond that. Was that an error? It, well, I couldn't tell it, the replay. He replug. looked like uh, Sarge, Sarge mentioned that he may have let it play him. Did he? Okay. It took a weird hop. It was hard to tell on television. He's made every other play, though. Yeah, it, it, I thought it took a funny hop, so but I didn't realize he let him play it. He let it play him. One ball, two strikes, the count to Buck. Steve C. Shack is throwing in the pen for the Marlins. Burley's due up next. Good pitch. He got a breaking ball. Buck couldn't hold up. One, two, three. Go the Marlins here in the seventh inning. Joe Blanton gets a perfect inning for the fourth time tonight on a perfect pitch to John Buck. Time to stretch at Citizens Bank Park.
was on April 12, 1965. The Phillies played the Astros in the first regular season game at the Dome. What other significant event happened that day? Harry Callis' first game with the Astros. That is absolutely right. Astros broadcaster at the time, Harry Callis, first called a game in Major League Baseball. Reminder, too, that on April 12, 2004, was Harry's first called game here at the Citizens Bank Park. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge Stump the fans. Saw that game. Person is a fan that day on a cold day. And I used to listen to Harry Callis broadcast games when I was in the Army at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. And he would do one inning of radio. And I was such a baseball fan and, for, you know, missed the Phillies so bad. I'd listen to Astros games. So when Bill Giles hired Harry Callis, I said, I know that guy. <laughs> I used to listen to him. Top. Tomorrow is a uh, very solemn day. The anniversary of Harry's passing. Yep. One ball, two strikes the count to Ty Wigginton. He lives on uh, wherever you walk around this ballpark. Not only with that beautiful statue, but also Harry McKay, the restaurant. Buck makes a basket attempt, but can't come up with it. Heck of a try. And railing got in the way. So Wigginton stays alive. One ball and two strikes. Change up right off the end of the bat in the glove. But just as it hits the heel of the glove, he hits that railing right there to John Buck. And that, that just made it come out. Now it looks like Qualls is up in the bullpen for the Phillies. The pits the eighth inning as Joe Blanton was getting congratulations in the dugout and did a terrific job. Terrific. Here to say the least. That's as good a fastball command as we've seen him have in a long time. Wigginton sends one of the air deep to left field. First home run as a Philly, and it's a long one. Right at the foot of Harry the Cage, and the Phillies take a 3-1 lead. Second homer of the night for the Phillies. That was a blast. Yeah, that was a home run off the bat. Phillies been doing that tonight. You know, he's throwing enough sliders inside to go away with his changeup. You thought sooner or later maybe somebody could open up on one of those sliders and pop them. And that's look up what Ty did. I think Buck came that close to catching that change up over there by the dugout and having the out. And he got another shot and it was a slider and he just didn't get it in far enough and he hammered it. So now Carlos Ruiz over two. What an open count. Carlos tops it to short. And one gone here in the bottom of the seventh. Here's a look at it again. And boy, he barreled that one. That one was way out, deep into the lower stands in left center field. See how deep that was. Here's a look at it. See, it's a slider, but he didn't get that one in. That one came right over the middle of the plate. And Ty Wigan did. He has tremendous power. You know, when he gets a pitch he can handle, he showed it there. Now Galvis, who tonight is 0 for 2. Big Jim Tomey's in the on deck circle for the Phils. Phillies have an all left handed hitting bench tonight. <laughs> Galvis bunts up the third base line. Now that one is a beauty, and it's just going to die on the grass. It'll remain a fair ball. It spun at the last moment right to the dirt, so it's a bunt single for Galvis. That's just an outstanding bunt by Freddie there. You know, he got it on the grass enough, deadened it, and then by the time it started to trickle towards the foul line, it dies. You talk about being able to dump one down the third baseline. And then it's on the grass just long enough right there that it runs out of gas, and a lot of times the lip will push it foul. If it's rolling fast, but it was dying by the time it hit the lip, so right onto the dirt, and that was the end of it. Well, Joey Cora going out to the mound, and he's going to bring in, I think, uh, Randy Choate. Choate and Dunn have both warmed up tonight. I mentioned before that Tommy had one hit against Burley. That was incorrect, and I corrected it. The one hit he has against the left hander is Choate. He's one for eight against him. So Burley's night is done. We've got a pitching change here in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's an 18 t call to the bullpen. Phillies on top three to one. Looking for a little bit more when we come back.
up to this point. He's responsible for Freddie Galvis over at first base. So he'll sit next to Randy, to, uh, Randy St. Clair as Randy Choate comes in to warm, warm up. This will be the third ball game for Choate. Now, Charlie Manuel, as Wheels mentioned, has an all left handed bench. It includes Pete Orr, Brian Schneider, Lance Nix, Juan Pierre, and Tomey. So he figured that at some point, a lefty was going to have to bat against a left hander. Marlins have two, Mike Dunn being the other. I was in his office today. He said, All right, Tom, what do you think? <laughs> Pierre has some hits against Choke. Jim Tomey has one. He's one for eight against him. Well, the idea with an all right handed hitting lineup against the left hander. Is to get ahead and have the bench hopefully not come into play as much. And best laid plans to this point have worked. So Tommy will pinch it. He's 0 for 5 this year. He started one ball game. Galvis over at first. Choate, they have two lefties, Choate and Dunn. Choate's a kind of slurvy breaking ball type pitcher. Dunn's a power pitcher with fastball slider. So Choate's going to be out there trying to come around Jim Tomey with that breaking ball and, and you know try and get him off balance, get him to pull off. Very, he's a, very fidgety. He's a tricky left hand. He's very fidgety. Inside, one ball and no strikes. He started with a fastball. One ball, one strike. It's hard to stay in there. When you're a left handed hitter and a guy's throwing those slurves at you. And he started him off with a fastball in to make it even tougher to stay in. On the breaking pitch. Well, he's really getting pitching him backward, not backwards because he's throwing fastballs, but he's fooling him because Tommy, when he thinks he's going to get the breaking ball, he's getting the fastball. Now I would think he's going to get the break. Oh, I would totally agree with that. What a two the count to Jim Tommy. Breaking ball and he tips it into the glove of Buck. So Tommy is a strikeout victim. Two outs. Well, it's time for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. We said there was a lot of defense being played earlier in the ball game. Well, this was a heck of a defensive play right here. Yeah, Joe Blanton gets his little comebacker here. He has plenty of time, but he makes a, a wide throw. Look at Ty Wigginton catch the ball, use his right foot, stay on the bag. And that is our Coors Light Freeze Cam. And when you looked up, Bonifacio was scoring at that point. So they would have had a run if he had been pulled off the bag and hadn't been able to hang in there. So we've got a pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park. Steve Ciszak will come on to make sure Victorino bats left-handed.
Flyers Penguins game two matchup and a preview of the Sixers playoff push against the Nets. Get all the news Philly fans need to know on Sports Night. Later on at 10, here on Comcast Sports Night. Steve Ciszek is the third pitcher used in the inning by the Marlins. It's 3 1 Phillies. Joey Cora has made these pitching changes. Cora, of course, is the acting manager. Ozzie Gian is suspended for five games. He's missed two so far. He'll go back with the Marlins tonight to Florida. Be interested to see what his the reception is when he he does not only get back to Miami, but gets back in the dugout in Miami. They have already had a game down there. They played the Major League Baseball, well, not the Major League Baseball, the National League season opener down right. there. It was Major League Baseball when he's in Japan. Right, a week earlier. So it's, it's not like he's going to be introduced out there, you know, where you would really get a, a feel for it. C Shack gets Victorino to lift it to left center field. Morrison's there. So one pitch and the seventh inning comes to a close. The Phillies do get a run, though, on Ty Wigginton's home run. Mark Burley's line is complete, and the Phillies have a 3 1 lead. Plus Ford stores. Buy McDonald's. Get a large sweet tea for one dollar. And buy Xfinity only from Comcast, the official HD triple play provider of the Phillies. Wheels is the 207th consecutive sellout here at Citizens Bank Park. It's not going to end anytime soon, which is the greatest thing in the world. The atmosphere has been electric tonight. It's a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night. And of course, the Fanatics' friend Smiley was here, and they've enjoyed uh, this entire evening. Phillies lead it 3-1. As we go to the top of the eighth, and Chad Qualls is the new pitcher. Now they're not booing Chad Qualls in his third game. The guy they're booing is the guy that's been introduced as a pinch hitter for the Marlins, <laughs> Greg Dobbs. Nice guy, Greg Dobbs. He really had a tremendous first season here for the Phillies. And you know, a couple of years. Yeah, he struggled a little bit there at the end. But this guy's, as you say, a tremendous pinch hitter. You got to play him towards left and left center because that's where he likes to go with it, especially when there's nobody on base. Takes the first pitch for a strike. You see his career numbers as a pinch hitter. It was Pat Gillick who brought him over here to Philadelphia and really gave him a chance, a platform. Charlie played him. I don't use him as a pitch hitter, but played him a lot too. Topper back to the mound. Falls off the hill easily. One out. Chad Falls looked like he was moving quite well on that particular play, and he said today, Murph, that he was feeling pretty good. 
Yeah, you know, we, we got injured in that Pittsburgh series. He had that heel issue that uh, kind of jumped out of nowhere. So I talked to him about it today because we weren't sure whether or not he'd be available in back-to-back -back nights. He told me earlier today, certainly he was available tonight. I said, how's the heel feeling? He said, perfectly fine. He doesn't even know how it happened. He said maybe he rolled over on it or he stepped on it funny. But uh, all of a sudden there was pain in the heel, so he wanted to take it easy. But thankfully that pain went away rather quickly. And here he is for the first time this season in back-to-back -back nights. Well, Reyes is the batter. He takes ball one. Murph, you and I both know as we get older, <laughs> you just move a certain way and something hurts. Speak for yourself, T Mac. I feel good. Wheels, do you agree with me on that one? Oh, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have no idea what you're about to face. <laughs> 1 0 pitch to Reyes, and it's in there for oh. a strike. 1 and 1. Reyes has been on base once tonight, once in the last two games. Reached on an error by Freddie Galvis and a fairly hard hit ball. He's down to the count, one ball and two strikes. Phillies uh, scored two in the fourth. Victorino homered. Mayberry had an RBI. They added another run in the seventh on a home run by Ty Wigginton. Here we are in the eighth inning. When you when you have a closer, the way the Phillies feel that they have a premier closer in Papelbon, the eighth inning is really really important in games. And that's why they brought Chad Qualls over. Softly hit. They'll have to hurry on this one. Polanco cuts it off and in time to get Reyes. The only way they were going to get Jose Reyes is if Placido Polanco cut that ball off. And Reyes just maybe a step slower than he was at one time before he had all those leg problems, but a guy who can still fly out of the box, especially from the left side. Tremendous exchange by Placido Polanco there. You know, he, he, he didn't barehand it. He did catch it with his glove, and then had to make the exchange. And did he get rid of that in a hurry? Gold Glover over third last year. I thought he made barehand that coming in because of Reyes, because I didn't think he could make the exchange in time. And doggone, he did. Here's Bonifacio, who's 0 for 3. Reyes and Bonifacio, a combined one for 15 in the last two games. And the Phillies have a chance to win this game, too, and they won last night. And you pointed it out last night. You keep those two guys off the bags, you have a chance, better chance to beat this Miami team. Over towards second, another tough play. Galvis has it, hurries, not in time. Well, that's the difference right there. Bonifacio is quicker than Reyes right now. And fast. That was a very tough play. And he had a, he couldn't bear him that he really couldn't, and he had to go for the exchange. And the exchange, it's just that little bit of time that's going to take. And that's why it was so amazing. Polanco got Reyes, but here he comes. He he has to use his glove. I mean, that thing's on the ground. Little bit of a trouble. Little bit trouble with the exchange there. Oh, is that close? That is, that's locked. That's actually closer than I thought. Yep. That guy could be the fastest guy in this league, and maybe in all of baseball. Well, he or uh, is that guy in uh, L.A. The center fielder, gorgeous. Peter Borges. The center fielder. Boy, they, uh, yeah, we haven't seen him except on TV, and they say he can really go. He's a right-handed hitter too, isn't yes. he? Yes. And an inside the park home run uh, this week, and they said he got around the bases in 17 seconds or something like that. <laughs> Oh, and one the count to Ramirez. Not really a time to steal a base with Ramirez up there representing a guy who can hit one out of the ballpark and tie the game with two outs. But that doesn't mean he won't go. Ramirez's numbers against Qualls. A little low, one ball and one strike. Really want to keep the ball down right now. Ramirez has been flirting with a, with a long ball in this series. He's hit a lot of deep fly balls to center field. Bastardo is warming up. I don't think for anybody in particular. You know, Morrison's up, but it's two batters. It's two batters down. He's just throwing right now. Two and one. They are going to hit for Stan. Was time call? No. It was after the play. I saw the first base umpire, Bill Welke, put his hands up, but it was right after the pitch. The 
pitch does count. Two balls and one strike. Phillies are really deep in the outfield. They throw behind Bonifacio and he gets back. Two and two as the pitch was called a strike. Oh, this is a pitch they want to get him out on now. They don't want to go to three to three two on Ramirez. And Polanco over near the line a little bit. Bad pitch at all. That slider. And now Ruiz goes out to chat with balls. Yeah, he got a little bit more of the plate than they wanted to, I think, here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he had a pretty good swing at that. See, that's that's a pitch right here, the, the decision pitch right now, because they don't want to go to 3 2. Whether they will go back to that, Shane's moved over a little bit towards left center right now, more to pull. You see, Victorino right there has just moved over a little bit more. Now the count's even. Two and two, the count for pitch in the dirt. Three and two. So Bonifacio will be off and running. Well, they decided to come back with a breaker ball there, it looked like, and he really tried to bury it that time because he knew he had hung one the pitch before that and he just overthrew that one. Or maybe he was trying to throw it in the dirt and have him chase. Stan, he's on deck. Bonifacio goes and inside ball four. So he's the tying runners aboard. He kept throwing him sliders. They say they want to take a chance on a sinker that was up because Ramirez likes the ball down. This guy, who knows where he likes it? He likes it everywhere. This guy coming up now. Stan tonight is 0 for 3. He's hit the ball hard twice. Oh, the last time? He didn't even say in the fourth inning he hit it hard, but last time was the hardest. <laughs> that was scary. Freddie Galvis into right field. That ball caught Freddie. But his leadoff not being held on. Fasso just took a peek to see where Polanco was. Polanco is back behind the bag, of course. Yeah, they're not toward the line. They don't care about him right now. He told him two good sinkers and he just looked at. Them. They're the kind of a lot of guys will swing out and top them somewhere. Well, this rally began with an infield hit by Bonifacio and then the walk to Ramirez. Bang, bang play, too. Oh. Oh. Another sinker. Oh, yeah. That's his best pitch. You know, he throws slider, he throws changeup. But it has always been Qualls' best pitch as a heavy sinker. So it's a tough spot. <laughs> Logan Morrison's on deck. Yeah, Bastardo is out there. Yeah, so if he gets up, I'm sure they'll go to Bastardo. Lefty on lefty. With the runners taking their lead now, Bastardo continues to fire in the pen. Qualls trying to get Giancarlo Stanton at the 3-1 pitch. Swig and a miss. It's 3-2. What a sinker that was. Look at this baby dive. Four miles an hour. Now a crowd of more than 47,000 on their feet. Trying to get Jack Falls through the eighth inning. 
Three and two, the runners will be off. And the pitch. Called strike three, right on the outside part of the plate. I guess a little more than bell high, and Stanton's down looking, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, two men left. Qualls gets out of the two-out rally. Here's the final pitch to Giancarlo Stanton. The home plate umpire, Jeff Nelson, liked it. Stanton did not. Everybody in Philadelphia certainly loved it. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Fifteenth on the fourteenth, it's Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night at the ballpark. All fans will receive the free Phillies Liberty Bell cap. Then Tuesday, the fifteenth, the Citizens Bank Business Person Special, and the Modell Sporting Goods Senior Stroll the bases for fan fifty-five and over. Go to Phillies.com. Go to the bottom of the eighth. Plus, you know, Blanco leads it off with the Edward Mojica. Off on my stroll story <laughs> that wheels took the other day in Pittsburgh. That's good. Larry and Scott have not held oh, off. Oh, well, of story. course not. They just can't help themselves. <laughs> Polanco sends it down the right field line, and Stanton missed it in foul territory, according to Bill Welke. That's got to be an error on Stanton, Stanton but uh, Polanco has to come back. Bill Welke, the first base umpire, was running down the line. He had a perfect view of it. Stanton may have that at bat in his mind right now. The wind helped hurt yes, it a little bit. Oh, he's boy. in fair territory. His body is. Yeah. You know, I can't tell, you know, the angle. But boy, his body sure was in fair territory. Right now was his was his hand over the line when the ball hit the glove. That's what he said. You can tell from a different angle. That's a fair oh, that's ball. A fair ball. That's, well, his body oh, is way. Way. That's territory. what I was thinking. How could that be foul? But you know, until you see the side, you, know, you got to give the guy the benefit of the doubt because he was so close to it. But that ball is definitely fair. If he touches it in fair territory, it's, it's a, a fair, fair ball. ball. Well, yeah. I mean, he could kick it all over the place after that. Back toward the middle, Reyes. A spin, a throw in time to get the lock. No wheels are Liberty Mutual defensive plays of the game, and there have been some good ones. Well, Freddie Galvis has been making a lot of good plays around here. Look at this one. He goes to his right, rolls over, and throws him out at first. And Hunter Pence makes a heck of a play there, and that ball hit by Reyes. And then Galvis, this ball 
is a deflection off Wigginton to Freddie, and he leads Blanton perfectly. Joe did a great job getting to the bag, was under control, didn't have to try and find it. Good defensive plays. Brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? Rollins is one for three. And it's two balls and no strikes. Well, the Marlins get a break in this inning. As the Phillies could have tacked on an insurance run for Jonathan Papelbon. Or at least started to. The ball hit by Polanco. Instead, there's one out. And it's two and one to Rollins. Well, he collects to throw a lot of change-ups. And his change-up is a split finger. And he just threw Jimmy Rollins one there in a fastball count. Comes another one. Ground ball to first. Debbie Sanchez barely moved. So two outs. Here's Hunter Pence, who has two hits again tonight. He has six hits in this series. He's six for 11 in this series. We could understand that. Yep. That's fine. We enjoy watching him play too. There is a lot. I mean, there is a lot to like. I mean, he's just uh, he's got energy, plays with a passion, plays it well. He's retired on a ground out to Reyes, and we go to the ninth inning. Jonathan Papelbon coming into a save situation. As we go to the top of the ninth, the Phillies on top three to one. It's his first one here at this ballpark. Yard in a save situation. You can tell the intensity that this guy feeds off of is here tonight as he's trying to close out the Florida or Miami Marlins. Phillies lead it three to one as we go to the top of the ninth inning. Yeah, he came into a game here the other day. Totally different situation. Phillies trailing, just trying to get him an inning of work. And in this case, as you say, Tom, you know, he, he works off energy, and, and there's a lot of energy here right now in this save sure situation. Is. So two games, a 4.50 earned run average. He did pitch in game one of this series. He gave up a home run. Yeah, and that, like I said, we came into that game and you know it was just kind of uh, you know everything was dead that day. Phillies weren't hitting at all. You could just feel that we're going to lose that game. But this is totally different. This is what he's here for. He has this alter ego, which he calls Cinco Ocho. <laughs> See his average save average the last five years 31.3. Well, that's why he wears that 58 for Cinco Ocho. Yeah. They ask him about it and say, Yeah, he was here tonight. Logan Morrison will lead it off. It'll be Morrison, Sanchez, Infante. Those are the scheduled hitters against Jonathan Papelbon. Well, he's trying to win the series. A 
little flare to center. Victorino will play it on a hop. And the Marlins have the leadoff batter aboard. It sounded like he may have even broken his bat on that one. Phillies post game live. Get all the highlights and a complete recap of this matchup after the game. Stay tuned for the expert analysis and exclusive player reactions on Phillies post game live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. That's coming up after the ball game. Fifth hit of the night for the Marlins. Gabby Sanchez, the batter. Sanchez 0 for 3. Phillies will play a no doubles defense in the outfield. Don't hit it over your head. And uh, they have Polanco near the line at third. See how deep the outfielders are. They'll give up the hit in front of them. Well, the middle infielders looking to turn two. Sanchez is looking to go yard on that swing. And it's one ball and one strike. Papelbon's fastball will usually be in the mid 90s. The first couple have been 92 93 as he loosens himself up here on a cool night. One ball and one strike to Sanchez. Just with that breaking ball, and it's two and one. Herndon, Kendrick, and now Savory just loosening up in the pen. Guys haven't gotten a whole lot of work. So they're just throwing right now for no real reason but to throw. It's not that they're getting ready to come into the ball game at all. Two and two the count. Right, this is Papel Bonds in it. The Phillies used four different closers. Jose Contreras, Ryan Matson, Antonio Bastardo, Brad Lidge. This year, it's Jonathan Papelbon's job. And it will be for the next several years. The 2 2 pitch. Change up inside, 3 and 2. Well, his change up's a splitter, and that's 2 2 they threw it on. Now they go to a fastball count. Joe Blanton started the ball game. He was outstanding. Seven innings, three hits and a run. Struck out three. Got some stellar defense behind him. Chad Qualls pitched a scoreless eighth. And now Papelbon, the leadoff batter aboard. Nobody out. Top of the ninth. Sanchez stays alive. Got a little quiet here. We'll get revved up soon if he can get this first out. Yeah, I'm a nervous right now. First time watching the new guy. Off with the mask, has room for the moment, pounds the glove, makes the catch, one away. Boy, ball four, two, way up out of the strike zone. That was some play by Carlos Ruiz, the way he got himself under control. That ball's going to come spinning back towards him, and he wanted to make sure he did not track that thing on the screen. Watch what he does at the very end. See, well, that's ball four. I mean, it's way out of the strike zone. Sanchez really helps him. Take a look at But anyway, he's right near the screen, and what a tremendous job he did to make sure he made no contact with that screen. That's not easy to do either with that big flat glove. One out. 
Omar Infante. See, One Gabby, for three. Excuse me, Tom. You see Gabby Sanchez in the dugout knowing that he should they should have first and second, nobody out right now. Be careful with this guy. He swings early. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. He took the fastball right there. Surprise. Gave a sign there for a sinker, for a two seamer. It was a splitter. It went down. Just the way he circled that finger, you know, it's not normally a changeup, a changeup sign. Go to pitch back toward the middle, another base hit. Morris, it'll stop at second. Infante's aboard. And there's first and second for John Buck. Mistake there. Carlos wanted a high fastball. And, you know, he didn't hit it that hard, but the pitch was down the middle and in the zone. And what, what they wanted to do there was go up out of the zone the way they just did with Gabby Sanchez. See if they could get him to chase up there or pop it up. Well now John Buck who has seen Papelbon before. See watch him see sitting up here and now the pitch is going to be in this area. And even though it's running at him a little bit he fights it off. It gets a base hit out of him. Buck is two for three tonight struck out his last time up Blanton's last batter of the night. It's one back toward the middle that could be two Rollins has it a flip to Galvez this should be an easy one it is. And Jonathan Papelbon's first save at Citizens Bank Park as the Phillies have won this series over the Florida Marlins. They win tonight by a final score of three to one. Well, he gets the double play at the right time. Our Chevy player of the game, Ty Wigginton, he made a really good defensive play earlier in the night, and he had a solo home run that gave the Phils a little bit of a cushion. All of this behind the pitching of Joe Blanton, who was truly magnificent tonight for the Phillies, as he picked up his first victory of the year and helped the Phillies to their first series victory of the season against the Miami Marlins. Here's the final out. Taylor made 6 4 3 double play. John Buck was very aggressive on what looked like a split. And that thing was going down in a hurry. Hit right on top of the baseball. Freddie was not under a lot of pressure. And made a nice pivot there. And you see Jonathan Papelbon's emotion as he gets that first save of we hope are many, many more in this ballpark. So the Phillies with two of three for the Marlins. Not a whole lot of offense tonight, but certainly enough. This was a, a pitcher's duel between the Phillies and the Miami Marlins tonight with Mark Burley on the hill for Miami and, of course, Joe Blanton for the Phillies. Blanton went seven innings. He allowed three hits. He struck out three to even his record up at one and one. Phillies played exceptional defense all over the place, including first base. Ty Wigginton played very well defensively, but he also had a big hit, too, Wills. He sure did, Tom. This was a home run that he hit on him. Looked like a slider. Burley got it up a little bit over the plate. Ty Wigginton hit it deep into the lower stands in left field, and that was a big run there. That took it from two to one to three to one. Made it a little bit easier on both Chad Qualls, Jonathan Papelbon in that eighth inning. And he's, down the, he's down on the field now with Greg Murphy. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, Ty Wigginton gets a start at first base, makes the most out of it. Uh, your first home run is a Philly. Take us through that. You said it was a cutter you think he hit out. Yeah, he left me a pitch up in the zone there with two strikes. You're really just trying to stay short to the ball, and uh, luckily he left me one up, and I was able to get a hold of it. Yeah, always nice to get that, that first one out of the way, right, as you roll to it. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, guys hitting home runs in this lineup, and you're one of the guys they're going to look to. Um, you know, ju I just want to get up there and have a good at bat and, um, 
you know, if you, if you make those pitchers get that ball up in the zone, that's where you can take advantage of some extra bases. There are other ways to help out your ball club, and you helped out your pitcher, Joe Blanton, tonight, who really pitched well, but you made a terrific play over there at first base as well. They, they, they could have ended up in a couple runs for the for the Miami Marlins had you not made that play. Yeah, I was happy to stay on the back. I was, wasn't was sure if I was even going to be able to reach it, and uh, fortunately it stuck in the mitt, and um, we got out of the jam there. Joe Blanton, uh, it was real good tonight, and, uh, you know, moving along. I guess when a guy's moving and clicking like that, nice to play defense behind him. Absolutely. He was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It seemed like we were hardly in the field. Um, he was pounding strike one, and uh, anytime you do that, your defense is going to be on the toes, and we can make plays behind you. All right, Ty, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Good game. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Good job by the Phillies to win this series over the Miami Marlins. They did it with a collective effort tonight. They would have 3-1 to one over Miami. We'll be back to talk more about it right after this.